Hello. <laughs> so on the 21st of January, 2022, I ran the Art O'Neill Challenge Ultra. And I think this video is gonna be a bit of a kaleidoscope of me chatting to you now, some voice notes that I recorded after the race, the one or two tiny bits of video footage I got during it, and maybe I'll throw in some of the video I filmed of me putting together my gear list. Um, because I didn't set out to film this. Um, and sure, we'll see where it goes. So the Art O'Neill is a overnight uh, race following a 60 kilometer route. Although I guess using the word route implies that there is a definite specific course, which for the Art O'Neill there isn't. So this race is based on the escape of Art O'Neill and two other men from Dublin Castle in 1592. Um, having escaped in the middle of the night in the dead of winter, they then traversed 60 kilometers from Dublin city out through the Dublin Wicklow Mountains to Glenmalure. And this uh, race route challenge um, is a commemoration inspiration from um, their journey. Um, it's named after Art O'Neill because he is the one of the three men who died on the way. Um, he fell to hypothermia um, because this was back before they had fancy uh, GPS or running jackets or um, layers to keep them warm the way we do now. So when I say there isn't an official course, everybody starts at Dublin Castle and then there are two checkpoints you hit along the way and then you reach Glenmalure Lodge for the finish line. Best luck ladies, have a great night. See you tomorrow morning, bye bye. Hey, so um, a bit of a race report, I guess. Um, yeah, the Art O'Neill is such a, uh, such a unique event. It sounds so like boring a way of describing it, but like there are so many races um, and even ultras where you kind of just turn up and do the thing, which isn't really possible for this one. I am really glad that I went out with the like hope of looking for an adventure. Um, for me, I am not yet at the point in my running ability to be looking to complete a time on that kind of a race. Um, so I had a really, really good time approaching it like an adventure. Um, it's both the road section at the beginning, at, like starting in Dublin Castle and making your way through the city and up and up to Borgabrina. Like, I, it's both not like, it's not the fun part, but also it's so cool to like start in the city center and make it, make it the whole way out into the mountains and like properly into the mountains as well. Like it's not just like, you can't see like you're well past the city at that point. Um, yeah, I guess for me it felt like a, uh, more like a training run then, because I wasn't going out to race, I was going out for an adventure, but I wanted to also get any benefits from it. So for me that meant um, picking things that I wanted to do better, um, which was food and hydration and night navigation and like self-navigation were the skills I wanted to improve on in this race. And having never run through the night before, um, I started at half 10 p.m. and finished at half 10 a.m. So having never run through the night, that was obviously something I was just experiencing. 
um, at one of the checkpoints, one of the like guys making the teas and coffees said how it was um, half two in the morning. And that was the moment that I really realized that I didn't actually want to know what time it was. I was happy knowing that time had passed. Like I was happy to know that I'd been running for five hours or moving for five hours, but I didn't want to know that um, it was five in the morning or whatever time it was. And by not checking what time it was, it just felt like a nice run that was just going and going and going. Um, yeah. Which was actually fine. And when, the, like, when it became bright again, when we got onto the road section, I actually kind of found a new lease of life. I, it was also probably because I knew the finish line was up ahead. <laughs> but that new lease of life was really, really nice. It was a nice thing to know ahead of Kerry, which is a very, very long way away. Um, as for food, I did better. And water, I did better. Um, I don't know if I drank more water, but I wasn't as dehydrated. Um, Probably because I just wasn't sweating as much as I was in Kerry last year. Um, if I was to do it again, I would, yeah, I'd want to like, I'd want to have a different experience. So that would mean either I approach it as a hybrid with friends or as a walker, and it's like about stopping and having. The, uh, the porridge and sitting by the fire and uh, I, taking it um, really slow and enjoying it like in that capacity but I think the more likely um, <laughs> experience that I would go back for would be as a way more experienced um, open mountain runner and go back and do it again looking for a time, because um, where else would you find a race that was like, um, yeah, that was so cool and so self-sufficient. Um, obviously there are others, but like, this one was nice because it both felt like places I knew but that, like, they have to know at a whole new kind of in-depth level if you want to race that race. So, yeah. Um. Yeah, so I guess this is my race report for the Art and Eel. Um, I remember feeling really proud as well. Um, it kind of blew my mind a little bit to be honest, that I did this in January 2022, uh, having started running um, in January 2021, doing a 5K back then, and then doing this uh, amazing insanity <laughs> in 2022. So a huge shout out to Andrew, um, AKA Fitness Goose, my amazing running coach, um, who has a wonderful run club, um, it's through the run club that I knew Nino and Fiona, who I ran with. Um, yeah, no, it was really, really good. I had a fantastic time. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll be back in a couple of years, put my name into the lottery again, see if I uh, get a chance to do a, a faster version, if that's what I end up wanting to do with running, or if I just continue to just... Uh, have some fun and um, well I think I will always have fun with running that's my intention I'd never want to not be having fun with running that's not why I'm doing it but you know what I mean um, if for some reason I decide that I want to take it more seriously as with all these videos they are made possible by the amazing people who support us on patreon it's through their support that I can keep making videos, um, even ones that are mostly audio, like this one. And uh, yeah, this week I want to say a huge thank you to Peter Walker, to Patrick Berry, and to Michael Anthony. Um, here's hoping I never get lost in the mountains and that I find many more exciting races to enter. <laughs>
I think for the end of this video, I'm going to throw in the video that I um, made with Great Outdoors, um, where I ran through the whole gear list, I think a week before the event. Um, chatting through the kind of mandatory kit that you have to carry um, for the different sections. Um, this is quite standard in ultra mountain events. And um, yeah, you can have a sneak peek at what I was considering um, bringing with me and how you have to consider how much the weather is going to play a part in everything you do in Ireland. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that bit. And um, yeah, I will see you in our next video. Okay, bye. Hello guys, so, okay, so today I'm going to be running through the gear list and kind of talking about the items, sharing a few of my options, and yeah, getting excited for the race. So the race is kind of divided into two sections. The first 30k is the road section, and the second 30k is the mountain section. And when you reach the checkpoint one, where you start off kind of into the mountains, there's a couple of extra pieces of kit that you're going to have to pick up there. But to start with, first thing mentioned on the gear list is a basic first aid kit with a minimum of um, one big bandage. So I currently have mine in here. I'm starting off with my large wound dressing, I've got plaster and I've got tape. I have this in this bag because in here I have my thermal foil uh, mountain bag. So this is for emergencies only, and I hope I never have to use it, but I'm glad that I have it. So I'm going to have to have this for the mountain section, and these are my very, very basic first aid kit that I have to have for the whole race. The second item mentioned is a head torch. So you need a head torch that can last 12 hours. It's going to be going all through the night, going on it nice and bright. Make sure that you've tried your head torch out beforehand, that you know how to have it sitting comfortably on your head. I always like to wear a hat underneath my head torch, stops from moving about at all and alleviates any pressure on the head. Next is energy food and drink. So I am a big fan of soft water bottles and bladders. So I am going to have this bladder in the back of my running vest and a couple of soft flasks to kind of keep me going through the whole night. I'm not a huge water drinker, but it's always better to have more than you think you need so that you don't uh, get caught out. But I'm also going to have with me the whole way through the race are gels. I'm going to have a mixture of caffeinated and uncaffeinated gels. So these are going to be my bare minimum. These and some like gummy bear, fruit pastilles style sweets. And then I will also try and eat some solid food at the different checkpoints. So this varies person to person. You really have to figure out what works for you. Some people love to use uh, salted peanuts because they're very dense in calories and you get your salts back from your sweat. Some people eat bread rolls. Whatever works for you, works for you and you stick to that. Next is your basic high-vis vest. Especially for the first 30k coming out of Dublin, you're going to be on roads, you really, really want to be safe and be seen so that you have a high-vis vest, especially for that section. Next is a technical base layer. So what I have on today, this year, is a merino wool base layer. So it is full length sleeves, full body, really, really warm base layer. So this is what I'm gonna have on as my, <laughs> you guessed it, base layer for the whole race. Um, it keeps me warm. I quite like that it comes down over my hands so that in the moments where I'm not wearing gloves, I'm not fully exposed. Next on the list is a waterproof top. So I'm gonna be starting the race with a light running jacket shell. Um, it's waterproof, it's very visible as well, so it works really well for me. When I get to checkpoint one, so much depends on how that day is going for me. If the weather is really, really wet and windy, or if I'm just feeling tired and I feel like I'm not gonna push as hard for the second half of the race. Or for many other reasons, I am going to have a second heavier duty raincoat in my drop bag for checkpoint one. So that if I decide, you know what, I need something heavier duty going forward, I have that option there for me. Finally, you're going to need a fully charged mobile phone in a ziplock or waterproof bag. Okay, we've reached checkpoint one. First 30k is done, 
finish the road or into the mountains, there are some extra mandatory gear items from here. Number one, I've already mentioned, is my survival bag. So you're going to want a bivy bag and a uh, foil bracket, or one like I have, there's a bivy bag that is a foil blanket as well. So it's a, like a blizzard shelter. So need this for your second half in case, something, in case something happens to you on the mountains. Next item is maps of the route. Now, paper maps are mandatory, GPS is advised. I am definitely going to have both. At the moment, my paper maps are still in their large form. I am going to be taking the sections that I need from the two different paper maps I have and laminating those sections so that no matter what the weather is like up there, they're not going to disintegrate in front of me. The map and compass is compulsory. The GPS is advisable. Next item is a whistle. I want attached to my running vest. Blow really hard, the mountain's gonna hear you. Next mandatory item is gloves. I have waterproof gloves. When your hands get cold and numb, it's really hard to use any of your kit. So I like to have heavy duty gloves with me. Next item is a fleece wool hat. And I already have this piece on as it is winter. I'm sitting down in winter, you get cold. So this hat is gonna be up the hills with me. Next is a fleece top or a mid layers. Two are recommended. So I'm going to be starting this race with three layers on me. I'm going to have this with a base layer, I'm going to have another synthetic layer on top, and I'm going to have my waterproof jacket. From checkpoint one onwards, I'm at least going to have one, if not two, uh, mid-layer fleeces with me. So this is a mid-weight merino wool uh, mid-layer that I have used for lots of runs before. This is my usual go-to extra layer. It Packs down really small, which is great, and actually really, really warms me up. Again, similar to the extra rain jacket, if I'm having either the weather's really, really bad, it's going slow and cold, if I need something more, I'm going to have another um, fleece option with my extra rain jacket um, to change or to pick up at checkpoint one, depending on how the night is going. It's impossible to know what the weather's going to be like how exactly you're going to be faring. And because at checkpoint one, you're going to have a drop bar that you can access, I personally am going to have a few different options depending on whether, how I'm feeling, so that I can kind of cater my gear to the best for the rest of that run. Next is the waterproof trousers. I have my squish down waterproof trousers here. I tend to go for lightweight waterproof trousers if you're planning on only hiking the second section, going for the heavier weight ones to keep as much of the rain out as possible will probably be advised. I'm going to be trying to run, walk, do a mix across the mountains, so I'm going with lightweight waterproof trousers. And last but not least, you're going to need something to carry it all in. So I am going with the Osprey Drewer running vest. This is what I used for the Kerryway Ultralight, so a similar distance, however that was a daytime run, not a nighttime, and it also didn't involve the same amount of self-navigation. So I'm going to pack this full to the gills to fit all of this gear in. So yeah, that's a really quick run through of what I would bring out with me on the mountain. I am going to have multiple options, as I said, in my drop bag at checkpoint one in case either the weather has turned, it's not as nice and nice as I'm hoping it will be, or I myself am just tired and need a bit of extra help to get through the next 30 kilometers. These drop bags are then also going to be at the end point, so if I don't pick up those extra layers at checkpoint one, they will be waiting for me at the end. So yeah, best of luck to anybody else heading out. I personally am not looking for a time, I am looking for an adventure, and I hope whatever you're looking for on the trail, you find it. Are you filming? Yes. 
Hello.